Okay, so this video is going to cover actually uh, kind of a couple of things. It's a precursor to what we really need for horizontal projectile motion, and then a little bit about horizontal projectile motion. So where we're actually going to start is something that we call uh, 2D motion. So far all we've been doing is 1D motion, one-dimensional motion, motion that's going backwards and forwards. Uh, so we do, uh, if you think one-dimensional is backwards and forwards, then two-dimensional is going to be forwards and backwards plus up and down. So you can uh, think about maybe you have a pool table or a tabletop that is two-dimensional and you have a ball here that you want to get to the corner pocket here. So it's going to have to both go down and forward. It's going to go that way, but uh, it's got to go partly down and partly forward. Okay, I'm going to put the forward right there. So it's got to move in both directions. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a scenario where we have two-dimensional motion and what we do with it. So you might notice that there's actually a lot of stuff going on on the, on the uh, main page here. And uh, the first thing I want you to take a look at is there is a second video that is labeled video of 2D motion. And basically what that is is uh, a ball that's moving across a grid, starts from down here, goes that way. Okay, so I want you to take a look at that video uh, go ahead. You can pause me. I'll wait. All right, welcome back. So I'm assuming you saw the video, and you might have noticed that there's actually a couple of graphs underneath the video. So a couple of graphs here. And uh, I'm going to get rid of that stuff. You can see where they are. Uh, one of those graphs is only taking a look at X motion. So as a function of time, what's going on in the X. So I'm going to show that. So maybe after the first second, and these uh, graphs are actually in frames, number of frames, just because that was easier on the video that I was looking at. So after after like five frames, it was here. After 10 frames, it was here. You know, keep going on every five minute interval. So we read the X position and plotted those, plotted those. So we got an X versus T, uh, table, and we plotted those, and you can see the graph there. Uh, then we did the same thing with the y values, uh, again, after every five frames, so here, 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 and again, we got a y versus t graph for that, and uh, again, we plotted those. So what do we see? We see for the x versus time, I'll try to keep this color-coded, so x versus time graph, we actually see that it is really, really linear. What is that telling us? That telling us that it is constant velocity. All right, so that means we can develop an equation for that uh, where we have x equals xo plus vot plus one half a. I'm running out of room. T squared. Uh, you can you can get the idea. But in this case, we we have to specify that because we have two different motions here. We have an x motion. We have a, a y motion. So we're going to add a little subscript x to our uh, all of our main things, position, velocity, and acceleration. In this case, our acceleration is zero, so it goes away. So all we, we can really say is that x is equal to xo, again, in the x. We really don't need it on that one, I guess. Uh, plus the initial velocity in the x direction times time. We keep going. We do the same thing for y, and I think I did y in red. Again, plotting the y versus t, all the y positions versus time. Again, we get a pretty nice uh, um, linear line, again, showing its constant velocity. Again, we can figure out an equation. And this time, uh, I like to use y's because I'm talking about a different direction. So I'm going to say y is equal to y0 plus v-o-y-t plus one-half a-y-t squared. Get the squared in there. Cool. Uh, in this case, we can say that, uh, again, acceleration is gone, no acceleration, so we can just worry about that equation. Okay, So that's just a motion in two dimensions. Two dimensions means that we actually have to take a look at both dimensions separately, one for the constant velocity in the x direction, one for the constant velocity in the y direction. Okay, But uh, there's a third video that's down there at the bottom, and it's called Horizontal Projectile Motion. So we're going to go all the way down there to the horizontal projectile motion video. And basically what's happening there, same grid, same grid that you see, 
In this case, the ball is going to enter from the left, and what's going to, it's going to happen is it's going to slide down to the uh, bottom in this parabolic path. All right, so I want you to go and watch that video, and I will sit here and twiddle my thumbs. All right, welcome back. So if we uh, take a look at it, again, what we did here is looking at X and Y. So all the stuff that's happening along the X direction down here. Uh, let's try to keep this color coded. So I'm going to say Y is the upward, and the, uh, the green stuff that we had earlier is the X that's down here. So again, we have to take a look at them. I build an X versus T uh, table and build a Y versus T table over here. You can see uh, how I did that. You can check it if you want to, taking a look at separate uh, frames, um, but or you can just trust me. And then we plot them, right? We plot them. So we're going to plot, let's do x versus t first, and uh, getting on a plot, x versus time. And, you know, we're talking about frames, a uh, number of frames here, but that's really talking about a, a unit of time. We plot it, and what we see is, again, we get this very nice linear line. So it's telling us that in the horizontal direction, as the thing is going across the grid, it's moving at a constant velocity. So again, we can develop our equation, x is equal to xo plus vox times t plus one-half axt squared. Again, these little subscript x's that we keep seeing is just trying to keep us straight between x and y, the two different directions that it has to move. In this case, since it's constant velocity, x is, or the acceleration goes away, and we can just deal with this. We can say the x equals zero, and we get a nice little uh, equation of v o x times t. All right, but there's something that happens a little bit differently in the y direction. The y direction uh, has a nice little curve in it. So if we plot our y versus t again by the frames. Uh, we end up seeing that the thing kind of goes up and comes back down. It goes up a little bit because I wasn't exactly pushing it straight. I pushed it up a little bit, and so that's a little bit of my fault. But uh, we get a nice curve that comes out. That means we have acceleration. This is a constant acceleration that we're dealing with. And uh, because this is a y versus t, what we're going to do is we're going to make our equation y equals yo plus voyt plus one-half a y t squared. Again, this is a different from the x's stuff because all we're looking at is the vertical part. Where is it in the vertical uh, grid lines, not the horizontal grid lines as a function of time? In this case, we actually do have acceleration, so we have to keep this. But if we're talking about, talking about uh, uh, horizontal projectile motion, uh, our initial velocity in the horizontal direction is actually something that uh, uh, helps us out. Uh, on a position versus time graph, the slope is your velocity and we start off and again I kinda went up a little bit but if we start off right here where the blue line is the slope of that is actually zero the initial velocity in the y direction is non-existent that means all of its motion at the beginning was only going forward it was until later after I let go of it that it started falling down and if we make y zero equal to zero as well then we get a nice equation that says y is equal to one half a in the y direction, t squared. So let's just uh, kind of recap here. If we're talking about two-dimensional motion, right? 2D motion, horizontal projectile motion. We have a horizontal direction, the forward backwards. Okay, we have a vertical direction. That's the up and down. Horizontal is constant velocity, while the vertical is constant acceleration. Okay, there's only acceleration in the vertical direction. You can probably imagine that is to be gravity. Gravity only acts up and down. It doesn't push something forward or backwards. If we're talking about uh, uh, equations here, then here in the horizontal we have x is equal to v in the x direction times t. But on the vertical side, we're going to use y's, and we can say y is equal to 1 half a in the y direction t squared. Okay? The only thing that these two equations share is time. Time is the only thing that links the two of them. It is the only thing that, because the uh, velocity in the x has nothing to do with the acceleration in the y. So these two equations exist simultaneously, and the only link is time. 
Okay, we uh, most definitely will talk more about this in class. Leave your questions, uh, and we will uh, answer as many of them as we can as we move forward. You guys have a great weekend.